Stop trying to force it and just let things happen. You know, I, I get a lot of DMs uh, from people who talk about trying this diet for this long, this diet for this long, this diet for this long, and then they uh, list off a slew of how much cardio that they're doing and how much exercise that they're doing. And of course, all of these things are great, right? But if you're only going to do you know, like an exercise or, or like a, a diet for, I don't know, like two weeks and then you're going to try another. If you're like, basically, what's that guy's name? Uh, the vegetable police, right? If you're the vegetable police, the reason it doesn't work for him is because like every two or three weeks, he's trying something else. You know, you can't just do that. If you are coming from a world of constantly dieting, now I just did a video about this. Uh, it was a, a reaction video the other day that I did about this. If I remember, I'll link it uh, over here. It was the, uh, I think her name is Kathleen Stewart. I, the, she talked about this if you're chronically dieting, you probably have not been eating enough for a very long amount of time and your body is in this fight or flight mode and it's going to be retaining water. It's, it's just not gonna function correctly. And then you add exercise on top of that and then you try to starve yourself even more because of that. And then people start thinking about how they're not their I ideal weight or whatever it is, or the summer's coming into to season here up in the Northern hemisphere. And and everybody's wanting to go to the beach and everything and they want to look good for the beach and it just turns into this slew of almost fear-based gotta get it done right now gotta start myself gotta look good on the beach and you see a lot of this you see a lot of and this is a reason I didn't do the seller sizer video yet is because of whatever reason I am retaining water right now but you see a lot of this if, if, if you're retaining a lot of water you're you know that quote skinny fat the reason for that is is your body is losing weight but it's muscle mass and you're not having enough calories coming in to really keep that muscle mass and you are going to lose a certain amount of muscle when you're when you're diet uh, you know when you're losing weight it's just going to happen you just don't even need that much muscle anymore you you can you can get by without as much muscle as you did like if you're 405 pounds or 400 or whatever I ended up being and now all of a sudden you're 200 and some pounds you don't need as much muscle mass as you once had so you you are going to lose some of that but if you're losing too much if you're losing too much other things in your body your body is going to replace that with water it does not want to be it does not want to lose a, a crazy amount of weight too fast and this is one of the reasons why I added avocado into my raw when I was doing raw because I literally was losing sometimes up to two pounds a day and it was getting ridiculous but my body was kind of replacing it with water so I was having this water uh, excess water uh, issue issues going on and you see a lot of this throughout the community there was that one girl on natural vegan or something like that she's really excruciatingly annoying but if you look at her raw days she had a lot of water retention if you look at a lot of people who are chronic dieters they have a lot of water retention I uh, am included in that yesterday I was retaining so much water that I could actually feel it in my na nasal cavity like water and that's the reason I, I haven't done I, I haven't done this video on the seller sizer because I realized that I started off too fast, right? And I, I needed to level it back out. I'll talk about all that in the video, but the reason I'm actually making this video is because I realized that I was trying to force it too much. And I've been going to the park at night after I do my art stuff and, and if I'm making a video after all that stuff is done. Matter, but I've just been forcing things, haven't been eating as much as I really should have. I haven't really been tracking calories. I said I was gonna start that. It's Monday, so maybe I'll start that today. I don't know, but just don't force this too much. Like I, one of the things, the one of the things that I see the most is when people are like, I can't lose weight. They also list off how much exercise they're doing. They have this mentality that has been fed to us by basically the medical industry of uh, starve yourself, and eat uh, eat as little as you hum humanly possible, uh, you know, can humanly possibly eat. And we have so many symptoms of that. You know, the, the chronic fatigue, you have the uh, always emotional, way more emotional than you used to be. Don't really like going out in public. Don't really want to talk to anybody anymore. I mean, there's just such a slew of things that can come around of not actually eating enough. Or like people have the, the staple, uh, you know, their stomach staple. I had a family member had that done. They almost died. 
they almost died and still to this day they don't really look that healthy right they don't look healthy at all luckily they're up there in years so it's a lot different if you're in your 20s not saying you know like if you're up there in your years you shouldn't have any good health you should have good health and that actually reminds me of i went to the uh to my father's garden to help them out this week because he's got this huge garden and they were bragging about how much memory loss they've had over the years and stuff like that um and then and i go back to these interviews that i did with uh peter rogers md and i haven't had him on here in a while and he talks about as he's you know he's a doctor and he sees that anybody over like the age of 60 is basically a vegetable that can kind of operate and this did not used to be the case it's not used to be the case i remember sitting when i was growing up i used to sit i actually used to sit and talk to the older people quite a bit and they remembered everything about their lives they remembered everything and now you talk to people who are like a little bit over 60 they can't even remember a conversation you had with them yesterday. I'm like, how is this possible? How is this possible? Because I've seen both ends of this. I've seen both ends of this, uh, you know, being, you know, it's here since the 80s. When I was growing up, I used to talk because most of my neighbors actually, because, you know, people went to work. So the only people who were in the neighborhood to talk to when you were a kid was other kids that were your age or older people who were retired and weren't going to work anymore. And I used to talk to the older people. They had conversations like crazy. They would tell me about the war. They would tell me about, I mean, they would tell me about all this stuff. And now when you talk to older people, I mean, they barely even remember how they got to the place that you're talking to them at. I'm like, how does this happen? If you look at the uh, the Minnesota starvation experiment or the Carnegie experiment or, or whatever other experiments were going on at the time based around diet, they talked about some of the minimums of calories back in the day were crazy. Like for women, it was between 25 and 2,500 and 2,700. And for men, it was like around 30 or 3,000 to 3,200. Now you've got men trying to tell people that, that you should be eating 1,600, 1,800 calories a day and doing two hours on the, the, uh, the elliptical. How, how did it change? These people were fully functional. They, they, a lot of them did get some diseases when they were older, a lot of cancers and stuff like that. But if you look at what they were going to work to and the, the hazards that they were working with, that's probably the, the likelihood that the reason that that actually happened. I mean, if you're going and working with these harsh chemicals with your own hands, you don't have any kind of you know, protective anything, of course you're gonna have issues when you grow older. It's not the case now. I mean, you've got 40 year olds who are taking like 10, 15, 20 pills a day now. You're expected to be on some kind of pill when you're at my age. It's ridiculous. I don't take anything. It's absolutely ridiculous to watch. This didn't used to be the case. And this all comes from people trying to force themselves into a skinny nature. This comes from just this trying to keep up with everything, you know, these days. And it just does not work. We're not built for that lifestyle. We're not built for that world we're not we're not built really for the world that we live in right now so if you are dming me or in the comments section or you know and like i still get the comments about you know how fat i am or like if i interviewed like georgie and uh, a couple of other people i get can't comments about oh, i'll look at two fat people telling you how to lose weight like I lost 150 some odd pounds. Yes, I have run into some roadblocks. A lot of the roadblocks I think are my still going back to that mentality of that bodybuilding mentality that I used to have back in the day of eat as minimally possible, like eat, you know, like barely eat, go to the gym, build as much muscle as you humanly can, not really taking into account that the people in the magazines are on uh, whatever they're on, right? They're on everything that they can possibly get into their body and you can just eat a, a bare minimum. But I mean, really, if you look at, like, if you look at Mike Menzer, that dude was eating a lot of food, right? I like to, to mention him quite a bit. Stop trying to force it. If you wanna try the high carb, low fat thing, just do the high carb, low fat thing. There are going to be foods that you just don't agree with. Uh, like I've been trying to add beans in lately and I just don't think that I agree with them. I, you know, I've noticed that this su super water retention kind of started when I started adding the, the refried beans and a couple of other things back in. Maybe I just can't handle it. Maybe the kidneys just can't handle it. And that is causing a uh, severe water retention. I don't know. Right. So the only thing I can really do is take it out and see if that goes away. I don't know that there's any test that you're gonna go do that's going to say, yeah, this is the reason that's happening. Maybe there is. 
I just don't feel like being uh, constantly figuring, you know, needle pricked uh, for everything, right? So if you're watching this and you've made it this far, comment down in the section, have you been on like a yo-yo diet trip your entire life? If you are, chances are that's the reason that you're not getting to your quote ideal weight. And some of these ideal weights, like when I when I did the interview with McDougal, he said my ideal weight was I think like 155 pounds. I'm sorry, like I have zero interest in being 155 pounds. Maybe it was 185. Either way, I do like being over 200. I do like being over 200. Um, that That's a, that's the video. I'm seeing a lot of this, especially, I, I really start getting a lot of these actually towards when summer is starting up, up here in the north, because most, most of my viewers are in the north in Australia. I don't, I don't know what it is, like Australia, I get a lot of Australians who watch me. But um, it might take some time. It might take some time. Like if you look at McDougal's uh, program and if you look at Barnard and they talk about, you know, how fast people are going to lose weight. In the initial, you, you might lose a lot of weight if you've met in certain criteria. I think a lot of the people that McDougal seems to get are people who are eating crazy amounts of food at all periods of time and then they come to his program they eat ad libitum and it just happens to be a different macronutrient ratio and they start losing weight if you're somebody who's coming in into this from the other end of this where you've been dieting your whole life you've been restricting your whole life that is in my mind where it takes a lot longer to get to where you want to go because your body doesn't trust you you are in constant fight or flight your cortisol is really high when your cortisol is really high losing weight is damn near impossible and i i think it's a combination of all of this stuff going on that's my theory i you know i don't have any science lab to prove this or anything i've just got where i have been i've lost roughly 20 ish pounds in the last 60 days the reason i again didn't do that video is because i think i'm around the 262 mark but today i had drank two liters of water before i weighed myself so i completely forgot so hopefully tomorrow or the day after i'll get this video made about the seller size of thing it was a fun experiment but i did it wrong and i want to talk about that uh you'll see that that video hopefully this week anyways i i think that's it on this subject it really pay attention to this stuff if you are always because it's the same people that i constantly get and, and you know like me you watch my yo-yos uh, uh, since i've had this channel i kind of wish i didn't even create a weight loss channel i would have created something else and then once the weight was finally off then you know i'll create a weight loss channel but i it is nice to see the journey i guess i have been extremely strict i won't eat anything that's not on the menu i have been adding things back in to see what i want to add to the menu and i think beans have got to go again i think i'm pretty much out of them i did a lot of damage to my kidneys and liver when i was on that keto carnivore life for like a decade i i think it's the protein like when i have a lot of protein I just don't do well. I, I'm thinking that's where the water retention came from because I wouldn't be surprised at all. I actually started having people that see me but don't know me come up to me and say, you're losing weight. I can tell you're losing weight. Over the last, I don't know, three-ish weeks, uh, I actually think I got under the 260s at one point, but I was doing more exercise than I was replenishing with. I wasn't paying attention to salt and stuff like that. So then I had some spillover. I don't know. I don't know. But it all kind of correlated when I'm thinking about this for myself and then I'm watching the DMs in the comments section. So I wanted to make this video. Anyways, comments, questions down below. Like, subscribe. Uh, we'll get this there eventually. I, it, it really is dependent on you being extremely strict with yourself and being extremely honest with yourself. That's it. Anyway, I'll talk to you in the next one. Share the video if you think it'll help anybody. And hopefully the video that you see this week will be the Seller Sizer one because it was a fun experiment and I do highly recommend people get a Seller Sizer. Anyway, that's it.